President Obama is basically trying to restore the image of the United States. But you know who will present the greatest image of the United States, of the people of the United States. It is the individuals who are joining George Galloway and the Viva Palestina convoy, the real emissaries of the people of the United States. It is the people of the United States who choose to fight for justice. They will be speaking not with soaring rhetoric of speechwriters, but with their bodies and with their actions. The U.S. government wraps itself in the image of Martin Luther King, as President Obama did in his speech in Cairo. But those who are really carrying forward the legacy of Dr. King, they won't be traveling on jets or in chauffeured limousines. They will be traveling thousands of miles in an act of international solidarity at their own expense. The crimes that are going on against the people of Gaza, they must not be looked at in isolation. And it would be a terrible, terrible error on our part if we thought that the short-term need to lift the siege of Gaza is also the final and ultimate objective for justice. Just as it would be a terrible error to reduce our movement's demands to simply ending the further construction of settlements in the West Bank, or even the elimination of all settlements in the West Bank, something that the Israeli government, not just Netanyahu, but all the political uh, players are committed to maintaining. But we must fight to reverse the terrible injustice that took place in May 1948, when 700,000 Palestinian people were displaced and driven from their homes. Today, 88% of the more than 6 million Palestinian refugees either live inside of historic Palestine, the West Bank, Gaza, or within 100 miles of its borders in Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria. Put another way, nine out of 10 Palestinian refugees could be home in the time it takes most Americans to commute to work. In 1948, the United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 194 that insisted that Palestinian refugees wishing to return home should be permitted to do so at the earliest practical time, and those who do not wish to do so should be compensated. This fundamental right, the right of return, is the dividing line not between one faction and another faction in Palestine. It is the dividing line between justice and injustice. It is the dividing line between colonialism and freedom. The Israeli government seeks to eradicate this simple and just demand. And so too does the government in Washington, D.C. In 2009, this year, the Israeli government passed a law making it a crime punishable up to three years in prison for those who dare to commemorate al Nakba. The Palestinian people, the people in Gaza, the people in the West Bank, those in the refugee camps, have through their courage, their steadfastness, their resilience, their determination not to be pushed out, have kept the flame of the Palestinian struggle and the hope of Palestine alive. It is not simply to control this piece of territory or that piece of territory. It is for Palestine to live. And in recent months, hundreds of thousands of people have joined us in the streets, in the United States and all around the world, demanding an end to the siege of Gaza, but demanding, demanding a free Palestine. And now we're taking the next step. Our sisters and brothers, we're sending our sisters and brothers, we're sending our comrades, to Gaza as part of the Viva Palestina caravan. When they come bringing humanitarian aid, defying the oppressors, they will speak not only for themselves, but those millions and millions of people around the world who stand with Palestine and who are committed to doing everything in their power, as we are committed to doing everything in our power for the freedom of the Palestinian people and for a free Palestine. And most importantly, I think everyone in this room and everyone in this movement for a free Palestine, we refuse to accept the notion, the one put forward by the Israeli government and its backers in Washington, that the people of the Middle East, that Muslims and Christians and Jews cannot now or ever live in a non-exclusivist, non-apartheid state. We reject that. In fact, the replacement of the Zionist colonial project, the replacement of apartheid, it will allow the people of the region to return to the historical trajectory where Muslims, Christians, and Jews 
did live in peace. The end of apartheid colonialism, rather than the building of apartheid walls and blockades, is the real path to peace. And that is what we are all fighting for. Let Gaza live, end the siege of Gaza, 